So a very viral video is going around where a historic Massachusetts church caught fire supposedly by lightning and it collapses. Check out this steeple. So normally I don't like calling out specific churches, but I've been calling out movements. I've been telling people where we are at in terms of judgment, in terms of what God is doing to clean house. So naturally, a lot of people asking questions and wondering why is it that God would do this, especially to a church. Now, I'm not saying that this is the entire reason, but quite ironically, people that have looked at this church, this particular pastor, and the last sermon, the la- the very last, I think maybe this was a couple of weeks before this happened, but the one that's on their website, I took it, captured it, and let me show you exactly what this person said. And this is by no means any uh, slander against the person, but check out what this person said. You know, why are there all those contradictions in the Bible? Well, because it was written down by the people over a period of about 1,500 years. So given, given that, uh, people are going to have different kinds of things. And, and I am one who does not believe it was dictated by God. I think that the scripture, the Bible, is human beings trying to make sense of, who, the, of their experience of God. And, and people in different times experience God in different ways. So I'm not sure who he is exactly, maybe the interim pastor from what I'm reading. But the point is that if you hear those words. You go to a church and you sit in a service and you're just listening to a sermon. You can tell right away. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, if you have a relationship with him, you can go to any room, you can go to any atmosphere for which people are gathered to to attempt to worship the Lord. And you can see if the Holy Spirit is there or if there is something off about maybe the main person or whoever it is. Not necessarily you know, the whole congregation or everybody's everybody being there, but you can sense if something is off. And so I'm saying this because this is indicative of a larger movement in modern day Christianity for which even the Bible is talking about, that the the lukewarm spirit, the heretical spirit, that there would be this apostasy, this great apostasy, there's this great falling away, and people would not fear the Lord. Now, a couple months ago, I've said that Uh, the fear of God would come back, that people would recognize who the Lord is and to have a correct biblical understanding of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of mix of things and there's a lot of people just saying their own interpretation of what they believe a Christianity is. And so I want to say something. It's it's a very high calling to be able to be a pastor. It's a very high calling to be able to say things in a manner, and this is to me too, in a manner that says that this is what God's view is, this is how I want to shepherd people, this is how I believe God is working and doing certain things. It's a very high calling, and it comes with consequences. It comes with rewards. And so what you will clearly see, for which if you ask almost any Christian, is that the fruit, you will know them by their fruit. You go to any church, right? The, the uh, COVID and the lockdowns were a very big shakeup. You go to some of these churches, it's a very dead, lukewarm church. There are thousands of these churches across maybe the world, and there's maybe not many that are truly on fire and desiring to be holistic, to look at what Scripture says, to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to operate with correct, solid theology. Even what you heard there sounds heretical. What you hear there, what you experience, what you're doing is a lot of routine muscle memory. They're just going by programs. They're just going by things for which they think they know something, but they're really not operating and God is not anointing and he's not with that church. And so we're in a time now for which there's a great awakening. And as part of the great awakening, churches, movements, families, congregations alike, they're coming uh, to the table. They're coming together, hungry and desiring after him. So if you're in this position for which you're going to a church and you feel off in the spirit about it, take a step back. Stop saying that, oh, I've got to go to church every single Sunday. Oh, I've got to do these habitual things every single week. God shook it up for a reason because he's trying to reset you. He's trying to reset church, quote unquote, culture. He's trying to make sure that the hearts of man is in the right place. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience in terms of 
uh, surrendering your life to him is better than, oh, I've got to go every Sunday. I've got to take two hours out of every Sunday and do this. And then when you go down a path for which you're not having a relationship with the Lord, you're not communing with him, you're not talking to him, and you're saying things at the pulpit, you're saying things and and doing things by muscle memory, thinking this is okay, oh, God will like it. It is not okay. And so this is why God has been shaking up churches. He's been shaking up people. And there's been even conflict right now. There's been division because God, he's separating the wheat from the chaff. He's showing people who's real, <clears throat> who's doing the real work, who has much more fruit. The, the, the fact that this church and many other churches, if people are not growing deep in, in their, as, as sheep or as the congregation, nor are they growing wide in terms of evangelism and many more people coming, then there's in some sense an issue. Right? So I'm not saying that, oh, you have to constantly be on this upward trajectory. There are some times for which you might have some ups and downs and some issues, things like that. But generally, when you see fruit, you know what that fruit is. There are many churches. There are many Christians. They're going to be lukewarm. They're going to be in this one-dimensional linear path for the, the re- almost the rest of their life unless they are shaken awake and they humble themselves and they ask the Lord. They, they You really come before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to I, I want to be changed. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to do kingdom work. I don't want to be regurgitating what other people are saying. I'm not, I don't want to just say what my own thoughts are. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. So realize that whatever endeavor you are on, whatever ministry you are on, right? Even for me, I just launched this business, right? I'm just trying to get the word out there. We'll see. If my heart is in the right place, God will use it. He will grow it. He will bless it. He will make this a venture that will actually produce fruit. So realize we're in a time now for which God is distinguishing. He's uh, tearing down the old. He's tearing down and making himself known. This video went very viral because a lot of people recognize, oh, there's something off. Oh, let me investigate what else is going on. And the people that are that really know and are real Christians, they look at it, they've seen and they sensed and they recognize a lukewarm and a not so good church. And again, I'm not speaking for his entire life and what he did before and what he's going to do after. Maybe this church or this person or whoever, they're going to repent. They're going to come before the Lord. They're going to humble themselves or maybe in their past. Maybe this was a blip. I don't know. I, I, again, I'm looking at certain things and it's hard, even as uh, the internet sleuths of the world are uh, associating causation. They're looking at this many, and I'm looking at this thinking, man, you got to fear God. Man, you can't take these things for granted. You can't take these things lightly because God, he's a serious God. If you're in a position of teaching, if you're in a position for which you believe you are uh, by your authority and you're given stewardship to do something, to be a representative of Christ, you better be able to take that seriously. I'm not trying to scare you in a way for which uh, it discourages you from being a Christian, but I'm saying that it comes with a high calling and you have to take it very seriously. And also, you have to do it by fearing the Lord. You have to have a healthy fear of God. I've talked about this. People are dropping dead. People are getting struck down. And he's tearing things down. And if God does not want something to move forward, he's not going to allow it to move forward. And so we're seeing, seeing a, a trend of cleaning house. The real will know real, and the real will rise up. They're going to get more. They're going to be stewarded more. And God's going to use these people for big and mighty things. So again, I'm saying this as a point of illustration because this video was viral and you will see more of these types of things. Remember, God doesn't care that this beautiful church was just torn down. He, In the Bible, he actually allowed people to ransack the temple because these people, the Israelites, their hearts were not good with the Lord. And so forget about all these things being lost, artifacts and all that stuff. Forget about those things. He cares about the heart, posturing the heart condition. So love you guys. Be encouraged. Uh, Talk to you guys very soon.